Animating in motion is ridiculously easy once you know some basic principles. So today we're gonna be taking a look at animating in motion and creating a really nice looking like button animation for your videos. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open up motion and then if it doesn't give you a window, just come up here to file, new from project browser. That'll give us this fancy browser here. Select the final cut title and that is because we're gonna to wanna to be able to drop in this little animation over the top of any of our videos. Also, I'm gonna do this in 4K. You can do 1080 if that's what you prefer to work with. And I like to have the frame rate at 60 for animations because it looks a lot smoother. After that, we can just push open. Okay, so this is what your project browser will look like. Now you can see this little type text here thing. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and disable the title background here so that we can just clearly see exactly what we're working with. After that, just push command I and I'm going to bring in this really nice like button icon and I will try and have a link to this in the description. Now we can't see it against the black so let's go ahead and change the color on it. Let's select our like button, go up to filters, color, and we're gonna select colorize because that will enable us to change the color of black. So we are gonna change the remap black to whatever color you like. I prefer a nice blue color because blue is my favorite color. After that, we are gonna get into the animation. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is use behaviors. Behaviors can really make the whole animation process easy. Select your like button, go up to behaviors, go to parameter, and we're gonna select the overshoot behavior. Now this is probably my go-to animation behavior because it just looks so clean. It's very simple to use and it really ups the production value of your animations. So after we've got that, let's go ahead and rename this to the scale overshoot because we're gonna apply this to the scale. Now you'll notice that if I affect these values, nothing is happening. And that is because we need to select what it will be applying this overshoot to. So go ahead, come down to apply to, and we're gonna select the properties transform scale and we will select all. So now if we select our scale overshoot here, we can set the start value to something like negative 100. And you can see if I bring up the keyframe editor, which you can get with command eight, it will play this animation over the length of our overshoot, which is way too long. To fix that, we're gonna take our scale overshoot and we are gonna shorten it like crazy. And now if you look at our keyframe editor here, you can see the animation is much shorter. So one thing you'll notice down here in the keyframe editor is these bounces. Now these bounces are called cycles and you'll notice there's three of them, one, two, three. So to change that, we can actually come up here, whoops, come up here to the cycles and set that to one. And now we only have one large bounce and it's just a lot smoother. And uh, in my opinion, I just like how it looks a lot more for this particular animation. Now you could drag that up to 10 and have 10 tiny bounces, but they get so small that you can't even tell that they're happening. So let's go ahead and set that back to one and we are good. You can also change the acceleration speed, which this does, you'll notice it makes this curve a little bit more drastic here. So that's really handy if you want the animation to be a little bit more obvious. So I'll just leave that up and it's a very nice big animation, which I really like for this particular item. Okay, we'll get into the start offset and end offset here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and leave that how it is. Let's go ahead and add a rotation overshoot to really add some more dynamics to this animation. So to do that, select your scale overshoot, push command D, and that will duplicate it. And now we can push enter to rename it and we'll just call it the rotation overshoot. Here we will go and change the apply to to something for rotation. So we'll select two properties, transform rotation. And now this is just going to apply to all the rotation types and I'll push play. And now it's got this really nice animation to it where it's scaling out and it's rotating and it just looks really clean and simple. Now if we wanted to, to make this draw a little bit more attention to itself, we could change the rotation cycles here. So let's do something like three and see how that looks. And now it's got this little like, hey, I'm here. And we could drag out the length of that. 
And now we've got this really slick looking animation. Let's go ahead and add in an animation where it kind of jets off to the left hand side. So we will select our like button. We'll go to behaviors and we will go down to parameter once again and we will set it to overshoot. And then we can apply this properties transform position and we want it on the X axis. And so now we want the end value to be right here but we want the start value to start off a little bit to the side. So let's go ahead and just drag that up. And if we play this, you can see it sliding to the left hand side. Now let's say that I wanted to, rather than shortening this overshoot, we wanted to um, just leave it how it is. And there are particular instances where you need to do that. To do that, we can actually affect this end offset. So let's say we wanted to end somewhere right in here. Well, we can just take this end offset parameter and drag that up and you'll notice that the animation is getting much shorter and now it's ending right here where we want it to. So now if I play that back, you can see it slide over to the left side and it's just got a nice smooth animation to it. I want it to happen a little bit faster, so let's go ahead and bring up the acceleration a bit. And let's go ahead and change that end offset to be a little bit faster. And there you go. We've got a nice clean animation of it sliding off to the left hand side, which is great. And what's awesome is by using these parameters, we can move this hand to anywhere and all the animations will happen the same way. So I can just bring that there and we can also set the scale and I want to shrink it down a bit. And everything will happen exactly how we've animated it without having to bother with a million different keyframes. Super handy for quick animations. The last thing I want to add to this animation is maybe just a text that says thank you. So to do that, click your text object here. Let's just type in thank you. And then we can select it all and we can scale it up a bit. And then we can get out of that and drag it down here. Okay, so this is kind of the end frame that we want the thank you to have. So we want it to shoot out as if it's coming out of the hand. So to do that, select your thank you, behaviors, parameter, overshoot, and then we are gonna apply this properties transform position on the X axis once again. So we want the end value to be zero, but we want the start value to be a negative number this time. So we'll just drag that down so it's past the hand a bit. And then let's play that back and you'll see it's taking its sweet time getting over there. Let's go ahead and drag the overshoot down in time. There it is shooting out nice and quick. And then let's say we only want it to bounce once. Perfect. So that's a really nice smooth animation, but we want it to appear as though it's coming from the hand. So to do that, let's go ahead, drag the thank you down beneath the like button hand. After that, I want to create a mask so that the thank you text isn't seen until it's past the hand. So to do that, normally I would just add a mask here, but we can't seem to do that with our text. So to fix that, we'll just right click and put it into a new group. And then we're just going to select the rectangle mask button right here. And we will just create a rectangle that covers the whole screen. And it just appears right there. Um, on the hand and then we can select the HUD and invert that mask so it's only coming from the other side. Now what's important is the hand is um, moving to the side so that the thank you when it comes back is actually getting cut off by the mask so let's just add a quick animation to this mask. So we could actually select this record animation keyframe button. We'll add it in. We'll just move it a little bit so it puts a keyframe there and then we'll drag it to the left hand side to follow the hand and we should be set. So now we've got this really nice smooth animation that you can totally use for your videos. And now let's make it very easily accessible for Final Cut. Let's find the end of the animation here and we're going to push Shift M and that will create this little green marker here. Double click that, select your type and set that to the build in optional. And that will enable us to 
select if we want the animation to play at the beginning, then we can push OK. And let's go ahead and find the end of the animation. And maybe we could add like a nice fade out or something to kind of close it off. So to do that, let's select the group here and we will push O. So it trims everything down here real short. There we go. And then select our group, go to behaviors. We're going to select basic motion and select fade in, fade out. You'll see that now this is fading everything in, which you could leave it like that. You don't really notice it here. But normally if I want to like shorten this and have it play at the end and I don't want it to fade in, we'll just get rid of this fade in time to zero. Now our fade out time, let's say we want it to take a little bit longer and now we can have that fade everything out at the very end and it's beautiful. Now let's say that people want to have the option of fading in or fading out. We'll just push shift M again, select this marker by double clicking on it, set the type to build out optional and push OK. And also just for the sake of seeing exactly what this looks like in Final Cut, let's push shift M once more, double click that and set the type to poster frame. And that is what is going to show up in Final Cut Pro so you can easily tell what the title is. Let's go ahead and re-enable the title background and then we will push Command S and we can just call this Like Button or you can call it, I'm gonna call it Like Button Tutorial so that I don't overwrite the one I've already created. And we can set the category to something that you like and then I will push publish. So in Final Cut Pro, you can see some of the animations I've made here and I've got my like button here that we just created. Actually, no, that's not the one we just created. This is the one we just created. And so now this will plop in real nice. I'll get rid of my voice there. This animation happens nice and beautifully. And then at the end here, it will fade out. Now, I just noticed I made a mistake. I would normally delete this, but I'm gonna show it to you. So to fix this, everything is fading out and we don't want everything to fade out. So let's just quickly go back into motion, take this title background and we wanna drag it out of the group that it's in, maybe. Here, I'll make a new group and drag the title background into that and drag that. Dear Apple, the group system kinda sucks in motion. So if we could fix that, that'd be great. Okay, so now, um, the background shouldn't fade out and we can push command S and jump back into Final Cut Pro Let's go ahead and delete that old one and redrag it down to the timeline and now it fades out on its own So I hope that was helpful to you if it was consider pressing that like button consider subscribing and I will see you next week